morning and welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. It's Monday in the week of the first Sunday of Lent and today we'll be doing the Order of Matins, page 219. The opening hymn, hymn number 544, O Love How Deep.
Yeah. 
Office Hymn 573. Thanks be to God. 
Join in singing the response for Lent. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up section from the small the sacrament of the altar what is the benefit of this eating and drinking these words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins show us that in the sacrament forgiveness of sins life and salvation are given us through these words for where there is forgiveness of sins there is also life and salvation how can bodily eating and drinking do such great things? Certainly not just eating and drinking do these things, but the words written here, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with the bodily eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. Whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. A read, a reading from Martin Luther. In order to raise up Adam after the fall, God gave him this promise when he said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3, 15. In this word of promise, Adam, together with his descendants, was carried, as it were, in God's bosom. And by faith in it, he was preserved, waiting patiently for the woman who should bruise the serpent's head as God had promised. And in that faith and expectation, the seed of the woman that bruised the serpent's head as God had promised. And in that faith and expectation, he died, not knowing when or who he would be, yet never doubting that he would come. For such a promise, being the truth of God, preserves even in hell those who believe it and wait for it. After this came another promise, made to Noah, to last until the time of Abraham, when a bow was set in the clouds as a sign of the covenant, by faith in which Noah and his descendants found God gracious. After that he promised Abraham that all the nations should be blessed in his seed. And this is Abraham's bosom into which his descendants have been received. Then to Moses and the children of Israel, especially to David, he gave the plainest promise of Christ, and thereby at last made clear what the promise to the men of old really was. And so it finally came to the most perfect promise of all, that of the New, Test that of the New Testament, in which, with plain words, life and salvation are freely promised and actually granted to those who believe the promise. Indeed, God repeatedly throughout that old, the Old Testament gave promises to which the people could cling in faith, and those promises were ultimately fulfilled in Jesus, when whom God sent at the appropriate time. We join in singing the Benedictus. We rise.
Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.